Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sunday Morning Shred. I'm your host, Mark Murray. This is the show where you wake up Sunday morning, roll out of bed, go grab your coffee, get your soda, your tea, your chocolate milk, whatever you like to wake up with on a Sunday. You hit up YouTube, and I'm here waiting to talk guitars with you. Today, we're going to be doing some axe hunting. I got some videos I want to show you from Brian Ragland. And I got some questions that you guys sent into the YouTube channel. Every time you guys leave comments in the YouTube channel with interesting, you know, critiques or questions, I screenshot them, I save them, and then I talk about them here on Sunday Morning Shred. If you don't know what axe hunting is, that's where I go on Reverb, eBay, OfferUp, Craigslist, and I find good deals on guitars that I would like to buy or buy as projects to rebuild. And, you know, they're available still out there, most of them. So. Go check them out if you're interested in these guitars. They're currently for sale, most of them at least, I should say. Um, at the time of recording this, they're all for sale. So let's get on into the axe hunting. This first guitar was sent in to me by a listener of the show or a viewer of the show. And he sent me two of them this week. This is the first one. This is the ever elusive LTD V200 made in Korea. It says 1998 on there. This is a guitar I would love to own in my personal collection. If you remember five months back or four months, I don't know, a little while back earlier this year, I found one on uh, Craigslist here, or actually it was a Reverb for like 12 or 1300 bucks. It was in great condition. And I made a little challenge to myself to see if I can sell that much video game stuff and guitar stuff in one day to make it happen. I didn't make it happen. I think I sold five or 600 bucks of video game stuff in one day, which was crazy and awesome, but not quite enough to get the V200, and these things never come up for sale. So, another one has appeared. This one doesn't look as good, but let's check this thing out. This was sent in, like I said, by a listener, a viewer. So if you guys find cool guitars like these, send them to me, mark at guitarguts.com, and I'll check them out, maybe play them on the show. So it says, this is a 1998 ESP LTD V200, only produced one year, and fairly hard to find these days, I agree with that. This is the same body shape as the JH1, James Hetfield one, as can be expected from a nearly 25 year old guitar. It's a little beat up from being played. As such, I've tried to take pictures from various angles to show all the battle scars and such. This includes the original case as well, which is in very good condition. I just picked this up from a $300 luthier service, which included new pots, new selector switch, new wiring, new nut, new pickup rings, several new screws, leveled, crowned, polished all the frets, buffed and polished the entire instrument, repaired a chunk that was on the side of the neck along where the fretboard and the neck meet at the 12th, 13th fret, repaired the cracked neck joint, <laughs> repaired nut, ba nut base on neck, and of course, a full setup. This thing got a ton of work done to it. 300 bucks is nothing for all that. That's a lot of work done to this thing. So they basically, basically got the guitar completely restored. And uh, yeah, let's check this thing out. Let's look at the uh, pictures for it. So there it is got tons of viewers actually since the time I took this screenshot they got it at $1,300 plus shipping it's now $1,200 they dropped it a hundred bucks which means it hasn't sold yet and they want to get rid of it um, I did see that they had some offers on it so I'm wondering were these offers lower than 1200 or maybe they sent lower offers than that and he's just kind of whittling the price down I don't know but yeah look at this thing so it's black it's got chrome hardware the iconic headstock. It's very similar to the Gibson Flying V's. LTD was actually in a lawsuit, or ESP was. They got sued by LTD. Um, to, they had to stop making this model. So they only came out for one year. I almost had one. They had this guitar, they had the Explorer, and they had the M100 at my local shop. Me and my dad went down there. Look at that real quick. LTD at the 12th fret. I love that. Um, we, me and my dad went down, we saw the three LTDs, and he said, pick one. They were all like 600 bucks, 599 I think. And I went with the M100 because I wanted the Floyd Rose. The other two were two pneumatic bridges, but value-wise, the M100s are not, they're not really worth much. You know, you, you'll see, um, I think coming up here, there might be, no, it's on next week's show. I got a video of something next on next week's show for you, showing that they're pretty affordable still. But yeah, look at this thing. This thing is just beautiful. There's a crack right there at the neck seam. So there was all kinds of cracks. This thing had just definitely been abused for 13 or 1200 bucks. I don't know if this is the one that I would want to buy because it's just been to hell and back. And as I'm finding with my LTD Explorer that I had recently picked up, I'm putting a ton of time into this thing, bondoing and repairing things. And there are little things here or there that I'm not going to be able to fix. Like 
along the side of the neck where the fretboard meets the neck like they were saying it's got all kinds of cracks and the rosewood is pretty pretty chipped in i don't really know how to fill rosewood large wood fills in rosewood so i gotta do a little more research and learn how to fix that but look at this thing this is a, just a cool guitar historic got the esp chrome uh you know neck plate cool guitar really cool guitar but for me for 1200 bucks i don't think i could justify that got the goto tuners though so i wonder if this is a made in japan model i think it's made in korea pretty sure made in korea that a case is beautiful look at the case on it comes with yeah 23 people were watching it at the time of uh that I found this thing and it's probably even higher now. The next guitar was sent in by the same person and they sent these to my email. This is an Edwards Explorer EX75M. Don't know what the 75M means. Lawsuit Explorer Black 90s produced by ESP Japan, James Hetfield Metallica. That's the description. That's a good description. Someone's gonna find this thing. So look at that gloss black that's that lawsuit body comes with the gig bag that esp gig bag sick gig bag too they call it very good condition eighteen hundred dollars plus 180 for shipping so 180 for shipping this must be in japan or in another country uh, this explorer made by esp japan factory for the japan market all parts are original and the condition is very good very rare 90s original gig bag almost Almost Edwards guitars made in Japan in 1990s. There's no doubt that this guitar is of great quality. However, since this ESP original pickup has less power, it's recommended to change it to the EMGs. So it's got the MX250 with the MX220 banana headstock. Uh, it's a bolt-on. It says mahogany neck and body in the specs, but then the person wrote, I think it's a maple neck, I think it's an alder body. 22 extra jumbo frets, pearl dot inlays, 24 and three quarter inch scale. I didn't know that they were shorter scale. I thought they were 25 and a half. So I, I, I gotta check mine. I wonder if mine is a uh, 24 and three quarter. One volume, one tone, one toggle, uh, three way toggle. Black hardware with the two pneumatic bridge. It's got the Edwards logos on it. And on the back of the headstock, it says produced by ESP. No serial number on it, which is interesting, which I'm totally cool with for these kinds of guitars. When they weren't making a ton of them, ESP didn't always put serial numbers on them, and, you know. So let's check out some of the pictures of this beast. Yeah, shipping from Japan, I see now. From High Gain Guitars. So there you go, all black Explorer. It's got a white nut on it. Beautiful. Edwards up at the headstock logo. Professional guitar and bass. I own a few Edwards. Amazing instruments. I actually have three of them. I'm th thinking about offloading two of them because honestly at this point, I do not play guitar enough to own three Edwards guitars. Yeah, produced by ESP. Got the Goto tuners. Made in Japan tuners. Yeah, it looks to be in great condition. That gig bag is sick. Ooh, look at that. I like the way the neck is mounted with no neck plate. I like these ones. My LTD M100 is like that. There's no neck plate on it. Yeah, very cool. 116 watchers. Jeez. Two people have it in their cart. Wow. Rad guitar. So this is a weird one. This is an Epiphone. It says it's a 1997 Epiphone Explorer, black, EMG pickups, and a Floyd Rose system. I don't remember this model. So it says, get ready to rip. High output EMG pickups and Floyd Rose whammy bar will give you searing solos, classic metal leads, and heavy punchy rhythms. Truly excels as a, as a metal machine, but surprisingly versatile. Impressive range and tone from crystal clear, bright, clean picking to well-defined chug-a-lug strumming. Wear a seatbelt when the distortion kicks in. It sustains forever. Rosewood fretboard gives a balanced, clear definition to all 24, 22 frets. Pardon. Check out the video to hear it in action. Oh, that's sick. They got a video on there. EMG active pickups. 
Um, they think that that's probably uh, an upgrade and a fresh nine volt battery. What a what a deal for eighteen hundred bucks! You get a fresh nine volt. Floyd Rose Whammy Bar with precision tuners. Tuning knobs allow for roughly plus or minus three half steps. So you can switch from normal locking to drop D, for example, without unlocking the nut. Nifty. So is that a fully floating bridge? We'll take a look at that bridge in a second because that doesn't look like a standard one that I know. Made in Korea. So this is a Korean model. S serial number indicates it was manufactured by Samic, which that's one of the factories in Japan that makes great guitars. New set of strings, rosewood fretboard. So let's take a look at some of the pictures of this beast. Yeah, see that body shape is really interesting. It's a little more rounded than the LTD that we were looking at a second ago. Those ugly knobs, what are those? It's got a strange headstock on it. It's a little skinny for an explorer. And the back just looks bizarre. It's got that neck plate. It's got the raw ex or exposed maple neck. It's got the tremolo cavity, which is, just looks strange to me to see. I like that, that neck plate, though. It reminds me of like a Jackson Charvel style. And the chrome hardware's got to go. Very interesting setup here. Got a couple dings here. There, it looks like it's got a contoured back, which I didn't notice a minute ago. I'm gonna have to take a, a second look at the back of it. Pearl inlaid logo. That's nice. Got that EMG. Is that an EMG 81? A set. Of, oh, they got the 81 up in the neck and the 85 in the bridge. I've heard of people doing that. And look at this Floyd Rose. So. It does say Floyd Rose, manufactured Floyd Rose patent, which means probably somebody else, another company made it. What is that? So it's kind of like a hybrid between a strap bridge where it has the individual saddles that can be adjusted up and down to make your radius. But then it also has the Phillips screw coming through the back, it looks like. And the strings must go straight through to the back with the ball on them. So. That's a different Floyd than I've seen. If you guys know about it, let me know and inform us all in the comments because I've never seen one quite like that. Yeah, it's got plenty of dings. Oh, you can see part of the contour right there. So it does have a contoured back. Interesting guitar. So let's see if I could get a better picture of the back of it. Oh yeah, it's got a belly cut or a tummy cut as some people say. Look at that. That is interesting. And it's probably more comfortable to be honest because I've noticed with certain... Guitars Explorers, somewhat, they're a little uncomfortable because they're just big slabs of square wood. But wow, interesting. Cool guitar. 1800 bucks though? Okay, I obviously got confused there. This one's 1100 It was marked down to 935 so I actually made these, I, I found these guitars a couple days ago, and I noticed that I didn't get enough pictures of it, so when I went today and got more pictures of it, the price went back up. They must have had a sale going on maybe for 4th of July weekend or something. So it looks like it's 1100 bucks plus shipping. Now this is an interesting guitar to me. This is another Edwards. I'm a big Edwards fan, as you guys know. And it comes in this cool transparent red. I actually have an Edwards in this same transparent red. And I, there was a time when I wanted to collect as many guitars as possible and just build up a ridiculous collection. And I always wanted to get one of these models. You'd see them come up once in a while for like $500. It says free shipping. If this thing's in Japan, I don't believe that because it's going to cost them 180 bucks to ship it or so, you know, from Japan to the U.S. So that means they're going to be selling it for like 300 and something dollars. But there is a comment later in the Q&A section that's kind of interesting. And I wonder if my friend Fat Philosopher, I wonder if this is the exact guitar he's talking about. So we'll get to his comments a little bit later. But the Edwards E tn 98 g electric guitar six string right-handed 24 frets japan used 446 dollars free shipping the eyes the item is used and has some scuffs and scratches it'll be shipping through who cares <laughs> about that part um there will be this is something that i didn't know about international buyers please note import duties taxes and charges are not included in the price so when you import a guitar from japan it's got to go through customs and when it gets to your country, like here in the US, the ports come and they, they give you a phone call or they send you a bill or sometimes it's, it's like um, COD, like cash on delivery. They'll give you a bill when it arrives and they'll kind of hound you to get their money. You're not going to get away with it. You're going to have to give the money for them to drop it off or to release it from customs sometimes, but the, either way they're going to get their money. 
It cost me like 200 and something bucks to import one of these, not this model, another Edwards, in from Japan like two years ago, and I did not expect that, because I've ordered guitars from Japan a couple years back and never had that, so kind of annoying. But let's check out the pictures. So there it is. It's got the weird pickups in it. Not a fan of either of those bridge or neck pickup. Those pearl tuners, tuning keys on it are sweet. Looks like it's 24 frets. It's got some weird bridge. Doesn't look like an official Floyd Rose. I don't like that at all. It almost looks like this thing was bought and then stripped down. They took the nice pickups out. They almost look like Seymour Duncan hot, rock, hot rails up in the neck, but those are two separate little pieces. If you look the red and the black, it's like a knockoff pickup, I think. Unless you guys know what that is, you know, if you do, let me know. It looks like it has a preamp. It's got a mini toggle switch there and a pickup selector switch, which it's a metal switch, just like my other Edwards has. So that looks original. Some dings and dents there. And then the, the bridge, ooh, I like that neck, sculpt neck right there. No neck plate, that's nice looking. Um, the bridge pickup in it too, it looks like it might be a knockoff Invader, Seymour Duncan Invader. But for like 500 bucks, man, that is, that's a killer deal. Here we got a Jackson, free shipping from Japan it says. This is a beauty. I love the color, I love the wood, I actually just sold, you guys probably saw it, a couple months back I had a tr somebody trade it in, a really nice Jackson, what was it, not a Stealth, this is a Stealth here, um, yeah this one's from Japan so there's going to be import duties and all that stuff, 200 bucks, yeah these charges are normally collected by the delivering freight shipping company or when you pick the item up, do not confuse them for additional shipping charges, yeah I was not happy about that, I didn't realize that that was a thing. And no strings are attached, it says in the description. So Jackson guitar. Oh, this isn't a stealth. This is something else. So this is like a dinky model. Actually, this looks pretty similar. So the one I had was a Fusion, which is short scale. But this one is actually a Grover Jackson model when they were doing, which I don't really know why they were doing the Grover Jackson Jacksons. It says by Grover Jackson on the headstock. Again, if you guys know about that, fill us in in the comments. You guys are awesome with your information. You guys know a lot about guitars and really helping me out a lot of times so yeah Grover Jackson there on the headstock I don't know why some of them have that if they, they were special edition was that a budget guitar I don't know but for 619 bucks or best offer shipping from Japan 24 fret bound neck that's a pretty nice guitar almost looks like the fusion same finish I had on the fusion here here is one of my guitars I actually have for sale so this is the Dean. If you guys saw the recent video, you'll see uh, I have a few guitars for sale. I got a Schecter S Sun Valley Shredder, and then we got this Dave Mustaine VMNT. I got them both in on trade-ins, and they're both nice guitars. Uh, I got all the specs on here for this one. 24 frets, maple neck, um, D-shaped neck, but it's really got like a high point in the middle. It's almost like a V-shape, almost. But it's a nice guitar. Check it out. It's in pretty good condition. There's a couple of them out there on Reverb for sale right now. But bolt on, got that nice maple neck, made in China. I actually have some pretty nice guitars from made in China. It's got a couple chips on the wings. The Epiphone Explorers are made in China, the 1984, you know, Hetfield style ones. And ooh, the beautiful frets. I just cleaned the frets, oiled the fretboard, got this thing looking beautiful. So 400 bucks plus 65 bucks shipping here in the U.S. That's a great deal. Five star guitar guts. Uh, rating right there I like that now this one is one that I found on Craigslist and it's been up there for weeks in my area here where's it at Camarillo about 45 minutes away from here and if I was still hoarding guitars this would already be here 395 bucks that's a pretty fair price for this Korean made KH203 okay so it's a 203 that means it's bolt-on I think I would try to negotiate for this one. I'd see if I can get it for like 250 or something like that. If I got it for 250, that'd be a pretty good deal. But check this thing out. It is basically it's a flat body Les Paul. I don't like the EMG HZs that it comes with. It's a bolt-on. It's got the spider low uh, inlays though. That's really cool. And it's got the Les Paul or the Les Paul, the Floyd Rose Pro style bridge, which not a fan of that. I gotta have the the, the standard style bridge. Inlays are rad. For sure, though, is it Korean or how do you know the difference between the new and the old LTD Kirkhamets? There's a, you know, they've they've reissued them. 
And then here we got one more guitar. That was one that I showed you guys a couple weeks ago, and they dropped the price $500. That's a chunk. So it's a LTD EXP 200, the same one that I just paid 365 bucks for. Someone's trying to get 3,700 shipped. That's too much. I don't think they're gonna get that. So there's some pretty sick guitars out there on the market right now, but next I wanna look into Brian Ragland. If you watched like two or three weeks ago here on the show, I was showing viewer guitars, and Brian sent in this video showing his insane collection of guitars a lot of them that he built, and he built them out of plywood, which sparked a really crazy debate in the comments section from people talking about the quality of plywood, and even I'm a little skeptical about it. But I want to work with Brian because I've seen the way he works on them. He puts his time in, they look amazing at the end, and when you hear them, they, they do sound good. So, I don't know, what what do you guys think about plywood guitars? I'm, I'm kind of torn because I've owned cheap ones and they sucked, but... With the, you know, I did have EMGs in those guitars and they sounded pretty good also. They felt a little cheap. Some people said they thought that a plywood guitar would be like a little too heavy, but the truth was they were pretty light. All right, Brian makes some crazy guitars. I was noticing in the background, this guitar here, for some reason it stood out to me. It's just a really interesting, cool guitar. And he followed up and sent me some pictures because I commented on it. Infectious Toxic Waste. So really cool look at that crazy finish on this thing so Br brian actually wrote me a little message about it he said here's that green guitar you asked about in today's sunday morning shred it was actually a paint and modification gone horribly wrong in the best way possible i was attempting to paint and restore this beat up strap and uh beat up strap body i bought on facebook long story short i spent a ton of time and effort making the body perfect when i went to paint I wanted to have a neon green strat. When I was painting it, it went very bad in every way, so I got really angry and lost control and smashed the guitar and threw it in the grass, then the trash can. Right before the trash collector came, I came to my senses, retrieved it, put it back together, was in eight pieces at this point, ugh, and made a totally sick guitar from it. You can see it still leaves Im embedded in, the, uh, you can still see leaves embedded in the finish. Anyways, talk soon. Please use any video or pictures I send you in any way you like. So look at this thing. Looking at it now, it e it's even more interesting to me. This thing was smashed into eight pieces. I gotta say, I've, I don't think I've ever lost my temper like that while working on a guitar. Most I do is I'll shake my head, I'll, I'll say some horrible words, I'll walk around in a circle, and I'll move on to something else because I know getting pissed off is not going to help the situation. My brain, I try, I've pretty much trained myself because I used to be full of, um, you know, reaction. I used to be very reactionary, but I've realized over the years that getting pissed off and throwing a fit and a tantrum is not going to help the situation. It could probably make it worse. So the best thing to do is to breathe deep, think about it and go, okay, well, what can I do right now? to make this a little bit better or to justify it or like what can I do like getting mad is not going to fix it so this thing is awesome uh, look at the green strings on it it's got the EMG 81 that paint job turned out really cool it's different man so he, Brian rolled with the with the punches here infectious toxic waste I like that S I like how the S on waste is a little off and like it's like rotated that's very cool it looks really cool I like this thing so dang look at that that is awesome very ugly when you get close but it fits the theme really does Wow <laughs> I wish there was video of you smashing it Brian that you could send in for us to use on the show do you have that video I know you make a lot of videos. Yeah, that thing's awesome. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. That thing got took a beating. There's one of the brakes. Yeah, really cool, man. So Brian sent me a few videos, and I want to share some of them with you. This is him working on one of the bodies. And you can see here, let's go full screen on this. It's got his fingers crossed because 
He's hoping everything goes good. He's actually gluing the two pieces. Let's back it up a little bit more. Here you can see that that's the top and that's the bottom there. So he makes the guitar in two pieces. I would think that it'd be easier to glue the two pieces first, then route out one body shape for both both of the guitars, but he does he has to do two body shapes that are virtually identical, then glue them together. And yeah, there's the glue, so he just covers them in glue. And then after gluing, it turned out pretty good, he said. So then he brings it over to the, the sander, the drum sander. He bondos the, all the edges. So he, I just recently put up a bondo video for those wondering about the LTD Explorer. Um, I'll talk about that in a little bit, but yeah, he puts a lot of bondo on there. That means he's going to have a lot of sanding with this thing. That looks like a lot of work. Should pull up his audio. on the side of the front and the back and then I'll add once I get all that done and let that cure for a while but then I'll go through it with the wood grain filler and then this finish I'm going to try to make this the exact best guitar I've ever made so I love that shape that shape I mean it's just it's it's, it's sick it's just radical it's just it's just one of those things I mean it's a it's kind of a combination of like a an Explorer, a Kelly, Jackson Kelly, a Jackson Warrior. Like I said, I had to do a, you know, go do a bunch of domestic things anyway, cleaning this and cleaning that. So, uh, yeah, this looks pretty awesome. Getting ready to lose sunlight. It's probably about 7 o'clock here. Update. I just got finished uh, sanding the body filler. And... <laughs> Uh, it just looks amazing. Wow. What a transition. That is just such an amazing... Wow. Two is going to be featuring me on uh, YouTube. If you're interested, you can go over to Guitar Go. So, I'm just... Uh, he's just motivating me to try to become the best that I can be. And then he sent me this video here, which he starts to assemble the same guitar. And he does a bunch of work to it before he starts painting it, which is smart. This is something I need to start doing more. Really, I should be doing what he does, which is like a test assembly. And here we'll actually be able to hear what it sounds like unplugged. He's rocking some Metallica there, some puppets. There's that guitar in the background, that uh, radioactive one. We got one, he's rocking some one. All right, I'm gonna try to find some uh, temporary strap, strap buttons. That way I can mount where I'm gonna put the holes. So he's doing everything smart ahead of time. He's mounting the strap buttons, figuring out if this guitar is gonna be balanced, where he puts them, and if not, he moves them, and then fills the holes, and then paints it, so. Smart man. You could tell this guy's done a lot of guitars before. Look at it. Look at the background. If you didn't see that episode, I re highly recommend going back and watching it. In fact, at the end of this episode, I'm going to put up a link back to the episode where it kind of toured around and showed some of the projects he's working on. But Brian, man, you uh, you put a lot into these things. I'm I'm impressed, bro. I'm also going to link down below in the description to Brian's channel so you can go check out all his stuff. Very interesting guitar builder right there. So next up, we got the Q&A. The first batch of questions here is about the F200 that I did um, a few weeks ago on Trash to Thrash, or maybe even like a month ago, which, by the way, is still for sale. So if you're interested in this guitar, send me an email, mark at guitarguts.com, or just go straight to guitarguts.com. You can buy it there. All my guitars are also available. That VMNT I showed you, the Dave Mustaine Signature, the Schecter. I actually have another Jackson that's up for sale there right now, so... I'm going to be clearing out a little bit of the personal collection because I still got 20 something guitars in there. I got four that are out here in the shop that are for my personal collection that I got to make room in there because I don't want to have guitars on stands. I want to have all my guitars up on the wall and right now I've got three or four on stands still and I got four more that are going to be coming in there. So 
I got a handful of them that I'm going to be taking from the personal collection, so keep an eye out for that. Edwards guitars, and I got a Star Edwards, and I just got another Star gu guitar over here uh, from a trade-in, so I'm going to be keeping this Charvel Star and probably sell the Edwards Star. I'll have more updates on all that kind of stuff soon. But the first batch of questions is F200 related. Scooter said, I had a 2000 F200 in high school. Man, I love that guitar, but this one is a beauty. The same exact year. This is that, that blue crackle one that I did was also a 2000 model. So I see my webcam froze up on me there. Would be nice to have a tech guy here to uh, watch that kind of stuff while I'm recording. But anyways, we move on. Linden said, I love the headstocks for the F and the H series. I do too. Both unique, interesting headstocks. <laughs> Razorbone said, F200. Fat Philosopher, this is the comment I was talking about when I was talking about the Edwards F style guitar. There's a black Edwards Forest in my local Japanese pawn shop, maybe going for 350 bucks. Okay, so it's not the same one because that one was red. He's saying it's a black one. 350 bucks. Are these a dime a dozen in Japan? Fat Philosopher, you should, oh, you're left-handed. I was going to say, you should buy that thing. Heck, I would buy it and, and flip it. Although, I don't know how popular Edwards guitars are here in the States, so you might be sitting on it in a little while, but double your money on that one. Gary said, the crackle in the F200 looks amazing. I also remember when those came out, and I wasn't a fan either, but they've grown on me as well. See, I was saying in that episode, I, and when they came out, they just seemed too gothy, and now I feel like the world has changed so much that what was extreme in 2000 is like standard, normal, plain, boring, <laughs> you know, so... He said the Tom Araya signature bass especially. So we'll check that out in a second because I didn't know about that bass. Um, Ahmed said the F and forest shaped basses are so badass, but I'm not that fond of the guitars. I mean, I do like them, but I'll never own one. That's what I kind of thought too, but I bought the one that I made into the, uh, the crackle one. And right when I got it here, I got it for a good price. That's why I bought it. But when I got it home... I started playing it and I was like, you know what? I could see myself hoarding, when, as I hoard guitars, I could see myself keeping this and adding it to the collection. It'd be cool to have a, a, a huge collection, like every Korean LTD model that they made. Like have a nice Horizon, a nice M, have the Explorer, have the V200, have a nice F, um, Viper, Eclipse. How many do they make? They make a lot. Um, AC200. But yeah, I agree with you guys. So this is the Tom Araya. Araya, Araya. Um, that is a rad guitar. Look at this thing. I like the inlays. I like the satin finish on it or matte, whatever that is. Those pentagram inlays are a little wicked. There's, that's a badass bass. And then we got a couple other questions here that I want to cover while I got you guys. So... The LTD Explorer rebuild. Everyone's going, what's going on with that guitar? How come we haven't seen it? Well, if you've been following my Instagram or you're a Patreon member, you have seen it because I'm pretty much exclusively rebuilding that one on Patreon. And then when it's done, I'm going to edit it all into a Patreon exclusive episode of Trash to Thrash to give back to my patrons because let's face it, they're one of my biggest supporters, my team of supporters. There's over 70 people in there and every month they're... they're dedicated every month they come back and they stay members and i just really appreciate that so i've been trying to think of what kind of stuff i could give patreon people that's exclusive and one of them is the explorer rebuild so if you want to follow that you can follow my my patreon page for as little as a dollar a month but if you jump into the ten dollar ceo tier every time i do a guitar giveaway you're automatically included so it's another way i give back to the patreon members i wanted to do monthly giveaways but to be honest, the Patreon didn't blow up as much as I thought. If I had a thousand people in my Patreon, I'd do guitars every single month. But the truth is, the money I get from Patreon isn't enough to cover one guitar build. So this is my job. I do need to raise my, you know, support my family, raise my kids on this money, and uh, I can't be going and giving away twelve hundred dollar guitars every single month. So I still do them every two or three months. And there's going to be a big announcement about the Horizon. I'll tell you guys because you guys are kind of uh, exclusive. The person said who won the H100 last week, um, or a couple weeks back, they said, it's an awesome guitar. I don't even play guitar, though, so give it away to somebody else. So it's going to be re-raffled uh, off. I'm going to give it a second raffling. 
pretty awesome for that person. They said they didn't want to be named either, which is another pretty interesting, cool thing to do, I think. So, all these people asking, go sign up to my Patreon, and just today I posted, well, a couple days ago for you guys now, but uh, I just posted an update showing you guys the full bondoing experience and doweling. I'm kind of blocking where it says dowel there. Let me. So, it's like a 30 minute video of me working on the guitar. The LTD Explorer Rebuild Part 1 was me disassembling the guitar. Part 2 was me, you know, sanding it down and showing you all the tools that I use for all these steps. Each one's 30 to 45 minutes. And it's in real time without a bunch of fancy editing. Me talking directly to you, telling you exactly how I do it with all the tools, all my little tips and tricks, how, what I like, you know, about this tool, what I like about that other tool. So I kind of give you your own, uh, you can find your own path on how you want to build them because there's not one way to rebuild guitars. So right now the guitar is bondoed. It has been sanded. So there's part four is going to be me sanding the bondo and, you know, getting the doweled filled holes all, all nice looking, but this guitar is going to need a lot of bondo. So I'm going to have a second part to it coming out next week or in the week after that, that's going to show the finishing of the bondo, how to sand it. And then I'm going to reapply more bondo because there's a couple spots that were pretty deep and you don't want to go all at once if you're going to be filling some deep stuff. So go join the Patreon if you want to watch all the L LTD Explorer stuff. And I'm going to find a lot more interesting stuff to share just with the Patreon audience because they're just too cool to me. So last week on Sunday Morning Shred, there's Brian Ragland right there. Um, this was actually a couple weeks ago. I was sharing everybody's guitars on there. As for plywood body guitars, Dustin wrote, if you put good hardware and pickups in it, it shouldn't matter at all. Tone wood is literally a myth. There's a few videos out there that firmly prove the point, but it just seems like plywood would require a lot of wood filler and just why? If you don't have to, just why? Good question, why? I'm curious about the tone wood thing. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about that because uh, I, I don't agree with that. If you play an uh, LTD Explorer and then you play like a cheap Explorer, you can hear a big difference between that mahogany and whatever they use in the cheap ones. So I don't think that tone wood's a myth, but I also think that the quality of hardware, the pickups, how you play, even the string gauge and string brand, I guess, your amp, all this stuff has a lot to do with the tone. So the way it resonates throughout the wood, I don't think it's a myth. But I, I don't think it's all that matters either. I think it might be like a thing where it's like 10 or 15% of the tone comes from the wood. 10 or 15 probably comes from the amp. 10 or 15 comes from the pickups. 10 or 15 comes from the hardware. 10 or 15 comes from the way you play. I'm just trying to think of more things to throw in the mix to get us to 100. Maybe even 5% comes from the pick that you use. I don't know. But yeah, you do have to use a lot of wood filler as we saw from Brian a few minutes ago. Bad Apple Guitar Works. Tim McDo Mc McDougald. Why was that hard for me to read? I rebuilt an early 2000s Jackson Rhodes V that was a plywood body. Jackson Rhodes V that was a plywood body. Must have been their like, cheapest ones. I used the EMG Carry King set. It sounded great. I think it depends on what kind of plywood is used. There's a lot of different grades of plywood and different wood species of plywood. They're not all equal. If someone says plywood, they need to, to define what it means. And that's actually true. They do make different grades of plywood, so that's interesting. And he said it sounded great. Sammy wrote, I think the most downside on using plywood is that it's very hard on your tools, especially router bits might get quite or dull quite quickly. Other downside, if using like a decent birch plywood, it's usually heavier than natural wood. Tone wise, I wouldn't be worried, especially if using EMG actives. I've actually had a couple plywood guitars, a Strat, a cheap like $99 Strat, and a cheaper Epiphone Special 2, Les Paul, and they both were plywood, and both at one point had EMGs, and they both sounded pretty monstrous, so interesting. Jason says, in 1991, I had an EMG 81 installed into a Gremlin Strat I bought from a pawn shop for 60 bucks. For a beginning guitarist, it was awesome. The tech at the local guitar shop hasn't forgotten that all these years later. He probably still brings it up. Hey, where's the gremlin? Every time he walks in there, he's like, dude, this is like uh, 30 years ago. Give it up, buddy. <laughs> 31 years ago. 
Gary Parker wrote this. Uh, this is an interesting one. Wow, that Raglan guy is such a has such an awesome collection. He's probably spent more money on wall hangers and strings than most people have on their guitars. Probably. Brian came back and said, thanks so much. Yes, indeed, LOL. I only showed but a fraction of my present collection. Owned over 347 guitars in my time. That's a lot of guitars. Um, someone subscribed to his channel. Brian said, thank you. So the LTD V200. I did a video on this a couple you know, months back, I told you. This is the one that was for sale. It had black hardware. It was in great condition. Look how beautiful that one is with the EMGs and the black hardware. Um, Dennis said, I would kill to send you my LTD V200 to customize, but sadly, with the state of our economy, I can only dream. Well, if times get tough, Dennis, reach out to me. Maybe I'll buy it off you. All right, that's going to do it for our questions. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Leave your comments down below. If you have any questions that you want me to answer on this show, leave them down below. And uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be subscribed to both channels, Guitar Guts and Guitar Guts 2, which is seen here. I got tons of videos coming out that are going to be on this channel. So I've been doing two videos a week, Sunday morning shred and then like a midweek vlog or conversation with the guitar player. And I've got a bunch of them backed up, unboxings, all kinds of stuff. So this channel is actually going to be putting out more content than Guitar Guts 1. But Trash to Thrash, I actually am just finishing up a pair of guitars that are going to be the next episode. So it's going to be back really soon too. But thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it, guys. And rock on, my friends.